Hi guys, my name's Destiny. I work here at Zoo Creatures New England Reptile in Plastow, New Hampshire. Today we're going to be talking about exotic animals that we have in the pet store. The first animal we're going to be working with today is chicken, an albino common snapping turtle. This is caused by a lack of melanin pigment. She is about 1 in 30,000. Many people ask us about her shell and why it has that green color. All of our common snapping turtles have this green. It's the algae that they're swimming in. So the common snapping turtle is an aquatic turtle that prefers slow moving bodies of water. You can find them in southeastern Canada all the way to the Florida Panhandle. As you can see, she has a very powerful beak up here. You definitely don't want to get your fingers in there. They are omnivores, meaning they eat plants and animals. She prefers fish. We feed them little goldfish here at the pet store. We also feed them lots of greens. So typically these guys can get about 8 to 14 inches. The average weight can be from 10 to 35 pounds. So chicken here is pretty tiny. She is wild caught. She's living the rest of her life here in the pet store. She's kind of our ambassador here. Now Miss Piggy is our western hog nose. We call her Miss Piggy because of that nose that she gets. She's going to try and strike me. She is a very friendly snake, I promise you. Um, so when these guys get in that defensive mode, they actually play dead. Um, it is quite funny. So let me just get her distracted over here on this side so I can pick her up in the middle. She is quite beautiful. Look at that color underneath her belly. Yeah, she is full grown. These guys stay on the smaller side. This Western hog nose, she is quite cute. They tend to stay on the smaller side, getting around two feet long. Um, some can reach about four feet, uh, not likely though, with a life expectancy of 10 to 20 years. In captivity though, they can live a little bit longer. So look at that nose, isn't that cute? I'll push back. So actually, while she's all riled up, I'm gonna show you guys a neat trick that she can do. So hog noses, typically in the wild, when they get upset or bitten by predators, they like to play dead. So I know this looks a little mean and stuff, but let's see if we can make her do it. Are you gonna play dead for me? Usually they'll curl up on their bellies and they will play dead so that way they don't get picked off by that predator. She does like to give us a show. So are they venomous? They are venomous. They secrete venom in their saliva that is lethal to their small prey, but it is harmless to humans. So for food, what are these guys eating? So they like to eat pinkies, fuzzies, and mice, usually frozen, obviously in the wild. They eat crickets, live mice, and small animals like that. take out our bearded dragons. They live here in the pet store. This is Amelia and Emilio. Some of you guys might have bearded dragons at home. They are very common in the reptile community. They are great for beginners. We always recommend these guys as beginner pets. So these guys are pretty low maintenance. Some type, type of reptiles can get stressed out very easily for being handled too much. So these guys are great. You can hang out with them um, every other day for about half an hour to an hour. As a general rule, they have a common passive personality. Bearded dragons originated in inland Australia. They are found in rocky, semi-desert-like regions. Owners should be mindful of temperatures they keep these pets in. Adults need a basking spot ranging from 90 to 93 and an area with a lower temp of 80 to 90 degrees. This is critical in every life stage from baby to adult. It's also important to turn off your basking lamp when nightfall arrives. We recommend digital thermometers to help read what temperature 
the enclosure is. They shed their skin just like snakes. You never want to pull off this dead skin. You want to let nature do the work. You can actually harm them by pulling off that dead skin. And these two are quite funny. They're really familiar with each other. They live in the same enclosure. They have funny body language. Um, if you ever see head bobbing, it is a territorial display as well as a sign of dominance. They do this at both males and females for different reasons. If it's a female, he's trying to impress her. If it's another male, he's trying to show him who's boss. If your pet is doing it without any other bearded dragons around, he's just having a good time and rocking out. Alrighty, so this is our marine toad. He is one of my absolute favorites. You might recognize them from Harry Potter. So like I said, this guy's name is Spud. I'm gonna try and feed him really quick so that way we can talk about him a little bit more, kind of give him a little distraction here. Marine toads are known as cane toads. They are native to Central and South America. They are established in other places as well, such as Hawaii and Southern Florida. They like semi-tropical environments. Spud here is actually a tiny bit poisonous, um, especially if you ingest it. You never want to ingest that stuff. Always make sure you wash your hands or wear gloves when you're handling something like this. This toxin is a defensive mechanism. It is secreted by a large large glands located in the back of the eyes and throughout the sides of his body. So another interesting thing about this guy's skin is they actually don't need to drink at all. So their skin is able to absorb all the water that they need. So we are going to be taking out Gus, our giant African millipede. He is one of my favorites. So despite the name, these guys do not have a thousand legs. They typically have like... 300 to 400 full grown. So these guys have 30 to 40 segments with four feet per segment. Let me see if I can find him right now. He dug underneath that soil trying to protect himself. Let's talk about the environment and how these guys molt. This species of millipede is found in the rainforest and subtropics of West Western Africa. They are known to live in communities. They like to live in rotting leaves and rotting wood. They need to be able to dig under that soil to be able to molt properly. So giant African millipedes are the biggest millipede species that there is. Their purpose in life is to enrich the soil much like earthworms. Let's see if we can get a good shot of this guy now that he's out and about. So typically, if you see these guys in the wild, you do not want to handle them. They actually produce cyanide, and when they are threatened, um, they will secrete it through their body. So you actually want to make sure you wash your hands at all times when you have these out. They are quite fun. And they're pretty fast. I mean, you would expect that with having all those legs, right? And giant African millipedes make great pets. They're very low maintenance. We currently aren't selling any of these guys right now. We are breeding them. So this is Phoenix, a adult black and white tegu. He's an ambassador here. He lives at the pet store for educational purposes. He has a lifespan about 10 to 15 years. Black and white tegus are on the larger side of the lizards. They can reach up to nearly five feet in length. That's big. Female tegus are about five to 15 pounds full grown and males can get up to 20 pounds. They are known for making strong connections with their owners. They love the hand who feeds them, as I say. The black and white tegu is a stout lizard native to Southern America. Populations are known to also be established in Florida. You wanted to come out, now you just wanna go back in? 
They are not tree dwellers. Most people would think that. They spend most of their time on land and beneath it. They love to dig deep burrows. That provides them with all that humidity and protection. They grow rather quickly. As you can see, this guy's pretty big. He still has a little bit more growing to go. Um, babies and juveniles should be housed in a 40 gallon enclosure minimum. Adults need a minimum of an enclosure of six to four feet and bigger is always better if you want an active healthy lizard. We feed them things like eggs, fruits, veggies, frozen lizards, and lots of bugs. So these are our Herman tortoises. They're here for sale at Zoo Creatures. Um, these guys are quite cool. So I brought two out to show you guys today just to kind of show you the difference between a baby and an adult. So this is Fred. He is a baby Herman's tortoise. This species comes from all over the place, such as East Spain and Southeast France, oak forest, or where they have arid rocky hill slopes with scrubby vegetation is where they like to hang out. They are vegetarians. We feed them a variety of leafy greens and grasses. They also enjoy strawberries, carrots, and apples. Apples. They're very healthy eaters. Full grown, he can become seven to nine pounds. So as you can see, he's gonna be getting a little bit bigger. In proper capable care, a Herman tortoise can live up to 90 years, meaning your pet can live longer than you. So make sure you have a backup plan. <laughs> between May and July, the females will lay between two to 12 eggs in a nest that's dug into the soil. These guys also do hibernate. It's important for pet owners to know that if your temp drops below 50 degrees Fahrenheit, your tortoise may decide to hibernate. Some species in the wild can hibernate for up to five months, so it's best to maintain a constant enclosure temperature. So these are our dart frogs that we sell here at the store. They're beautiful and bright. I love that blue color. When customers come in, they ask about acquiring them and if they're poisonous. The answer is no. Pet store bought dart frogs are not poisonous. In the wild, what makes them poisonous is their diet, specifically ants, um, also other insects that contain toxin chemicals in their body. These frogs enjoy fruit flies. All right guys, so I'm gonna be taking out Scrambles here. Scrambles is a Burmese python. Um, she is albino. So let me take her out. So this is Scrambles, one of our ambassador Burmese pythons here. She is very friendly. She can get up to 16 feet, but the world record is 18 feet. She's hissing a little bit. She's aggravated that I took her out of her spot. But for the most part, these guys are really docile. They are native to jungles and grassy mar marshes of Southern East Asia. They can also be found in the Florida Everglades. Can you imagine being in the Everglades and riding up on the sky? They are excellent swimmers as well. They usually find permanent homes where there are large bodies of water. But when they do hatch um, and they're hatchlings and they're juveniles, they spend most of their time up in the trees. So their girth is about the size of a telephone pole. They are non-venomous and they use those huge muscles to subdue their prey. So people ask when buying this snake how long their lifespan is. They live about 20 years. All right, so this is Daisy and Lucky, my two rats. I get all my rats here at Zoo Creatures. She's gonna give me some kisses right now. They are a female pair. They are fully grown. I love recommending rats to people. I call them little dogs. Um, unfortunately for them, they only live to like at max three and a half years. Don't eat that wire, no. 
So a misconception about these guys, are they germy? Do they carry diseases? Uh, the answer is kind of. So wild rats you never want to pick up in the wild. They come into contact with all sorts of things. They are opportunists. They will eat anything that they can get their little hands on. They come in a multiple variety of breeds. This is the standard rat. We also have Rex rats that have curly, wiry hair. We have naked rats, which have little to no hair at all. We have Dumbo rats, which have ears off to the side like an elephant. But these guys are just the common standard rat. These guys are extremely intelligent creatures. They have a very strong memory. They can figure out puzzles and respond to voice commands. They respond to my voice every day. Um, these two recognize my voice and they're extremely cuddly and food motivated for sure. So with their teeth, we're gonna talk about their teeth a little bit and that chewing. That chewing is not their fault. They constantly need to chew on things because their teeth are growing all the time. They never stop growing. So it's not their fault that they need to chew on everything. Um, it can actually grow up into their skull. Um, so yeah, they always need to be chewing on blocks of wood and stuff like that. Ah. So for these guys' tails, a lot of people don't like rats because of their their tails. It almost like looks like a marsupial tail, like something a uh, possum would have. But they don't use this to grab onto things. They use that for balance, and it is a part of their spine. So you really want to make sure never to step on their tail, pull their tail, anything like that, because it could really harm them. So this is Jack. He works here on the weekdays with me. He is my pet. Uh, he's a Netherland Dwarf Bunny. I've had him for about a year and a half now. He just had his first Christmas. He has a beautiful uh, color to him. These guys are considered the gem of the bunny family. You definitely, uh, people will purchase these bunnies to put in shows. Um, so he is tiny. He's only gonna get to about 2.5 pounds. He still has any bit growing left to do. As you can see, he hops around. Um, so when having a bunny, it is super important to hold them correctly because if they twist in a wrong way, they can really hurt their spines. So when you pick up a bunny, you kind of want to smush them up and hold them underneath that butt so they are nice and secure. I know, Jackie, sorry about that, buddy. For a lifespan, Jack's pretty young. He still has a long life to live. Um, they live for seven to 10 years. And like I said, he's about a year and a half. Hi, so these guys come in a lot of different color patterns, about 20 different color patterns they have. So they are very unique. Right now, I am trying to get Jackie a girlfriend. I am preparing to breed him right now. But like I said, he loves coming into work and hanging out with everybody and saying hi to the kids. So Jack here is a vegetarian. I feed him pellets and stuff like broccoli and a little bit of lettuce. Uh, once in a while, I can give him blueberries or bananas. You don't want to give him too much. That can give them a little bit too much sugar in their system. But he does enjoy his treats, huh, Jack? Jack is a great pet. He is super smart. He is house trained, so we just have a bunch of litter boxes in the houses. He's free range in the house. Like I said, he's very intelligent. They love kids as long as you're handling them properly. Um, I have three kids at home and Jack adores them. Uh, you always gotta make sure you're providing them with leafy greens as well as hay. Thank you guys for coming to our show today. I love showing you guys all the animals that we have. Definitely stop in anytime. Again, my name's Destiny and we're waiting for you here at Zoo Creatures. <laughs>